Hey, <laughs> okay. So let's talk about Douglas Adams Starship Titanic. <laughs> oh, I've been wanting to talk about this one for a while. But again, I wanted to make it a surprise, so... <laughs> yeah, um... So if you're not familiar with the name Douglas Adams, he wrote the series Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which I highly recommend. <laughs> yeah, the uh, movie came out in like the mid-2000s. Yeah, my friend and I went and saw that we were just in stitches. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the movie just touches on like the more uh, popular book. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, but there's like a whole series, so. <laughs> Just to let you know. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, now this would be the third video game that Douglas Adams has released. Of course, in the 80s, there was Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and there's like, I guess, a political one. I'm not familiar with the second one that he released. And of course, this is the third one. Now, it was released in 1998. Everyone was drunk on Titanic because of, of course, the movie, uh, James Cameron's Titanic. And one thing to understand is during this time, there were a lot of video games being released having to do with like the movie or just in general of Titanic. The Titanic mystery video games, Titanic anything, it, you know, um, those ones, um, find things, you know, the hidden things, yeah, they use Titanic for that, and, you know, there's like 24 things in this image, can you find it? Yeah, they use Titanic for that. Just any, anything and everything they, they, they would release a video game for. Well, Douglas Adams, being the kind of person that he is, he was able to make his video game stand out and still um, get people to latch on to his game who were drunk on Titanic. Starship Titanic. <laughs> he blended futuristic with Art Deco. There's robots everywhere. I mean, it worked. And, um, now, as you saw in the beginning, if you watched the video, um, you're in your living room. I mean, the, the player is in, is supposed to be in their living room, and they're playing a video game. They put in the disc for, um, this game, and all of a sudden, the ship comes crashing into their living room. <laughs> <laughs> and the robot uh, explains everything, basically telling them that it tells you that you're being recruited to help fix this starship that's not supposed to be screwing up. It's supposed to be perfect and everything. And <laughs> and uh, so that's basically the basis of this game is that you're supposed to go around solve all these different puzzles and fix this ship starship titanic there are some optional puzzles like one that i found um well trying to what i was trying to do was uh i was going through walkthroughs to try and figure out how to uh cut these into chapters and everything or you know and they were saying that there's like a bomb or something that is completely optional. And I'm like, oh, what bomb? And it turns out that there is a bomb in this. And basically you have to figure out once you hit a particular button, then you have to figure out the combination. And there's like dozens of combinations. And it's like, I think I can avoid that. So we're not going to do that. Because <laughs> no. <laughs> That would just upset me lots. <laughs> as much as I love puzzles, no. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of a um, 
What is that, Inspector Gadget? This message will self-destruct. <laughs> now, um, I believe I saw that Douglas Adams does voice a character, and I believe he's the one that voices um, the robot that recruited you. And I could be wrong about that. And he also shows that he... I, think he's the one that was saying in the television set that says go on go on <laughs> and you can correct me if I'm wrong but it seems like he shows up in this game just for a short time but it seems like he also voiced a character in this now the other thing is that the late Terry Jones shows up in this he voices a character which we will see very soon and John Cleese does as well so I'm I'm really excited to see that because I'm a I'm a big fan of Monty Python as we all know, and but to have two from Monty Python in this game is <laughs> you usually don't see that usually you see one or the other, so um, I find that very enjoyable. <laughs> now, one thing um, I don't know if they do this anymore. It used to be that video games, well, I believe I, I showed uh, that, maybe not, like Fate of Atlantis has um, comic books and everything, you know, I mean, it's become so popular that it has comic books and that kind of thing. It doesn't have any novelizations or anything, but some of the LucasArts games have like, The Dig has a novelization, but I think part of that has to do with the fact that Steven Spielberg was behind it. So, but there's also been things like, um, like an audio recording of the, of the game. Uh, like, I saw one not too long ago of Loom. It was on a cassette tape, and so you could listen to the game. And, uh... <laughs> Which I find interesting. I didn't know that that, that was a thing, and um, but anyway, and but I I did know about uh, soundtracks for for games, and uh, so um, way back when, I, you know, a lot of people think that it's just for like Legend of Zelda, because Legend of Zelda has been around forever, but no, even as far back as when I was a kid, they, they were popping up and everything. And But anyway, this game had a novelization. Douglas Adams didn't write it, Terry Jones did, which I found interesting. I mean, granted, Terry Jones is... A wonderful writer. I mean, he wrote children's books and everything, and, and yeah, he wrote uh, fantasy stories for um, kids and everything, and and fairy tales and that sort of thing. So I'm sure that that's why Douglas Adams had him write the novelization. But um, I'm just kind of surprised because usually, I mean, because Douglas Adams is a is a writer and everything. So yeah, I'm I'm curious. I wonder if video games still have not I know that Legend of Zelda has manga and, and all of that and so maybe they do I <laughs> I just don't keep up with that as much as I used to you know so maybe I should but yeah so it has an, a novelization and um and that sort of thing it did and and Terry Jones wrote it I'm kind of curious. I would, I would like to read that. <laughs> and um, so anyway, and so yeah, th this is pretty much what the game is. I mean, Douglas Adams, known for uh, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. This is totally different. I mean, you still have the, the futuristic space concept but it's completely different. I mean, he kind of <laughs> latched onto the Titanic idea, and uh, which is smart. <laughs> you gotta give him credit for that. 
And um, John Cleese is behind it, and, and Terry Jones. Terry Jones wrote the novelization. And um, apparently, also, one thing that I read, I think I still have it here, um, when it was being set, when it was being sold, included in the box were a pair of 3D glasses and an in-flight magazine from the Starship itself. Again, one of those things that seems like a very Douglas Adams thing. <laughs> But, um, yeah, when I, when I saw this game, I remember this particular game when it was released, and my friends and I, we were just excited because we, <laughs> we were such fans of, of Douglas Adams. Uh, not as much for Titanic, because it seemed like it was everywhere at that point. It was kind of getting on our nerves. But when we saw this, and a friend of ours had the game, and so we would all go to their house, and we would be playing the game. <laughs> Oh, it was just, it was so much fun. And, uh, so, anyway, um, yeah, so, so this is, uh, Starship Titanic. If you've never read, before I close up, if you've never read any of Douglas Adams' work, <laughs> I highly recommend you do. It is so much fun. If you've never seen the movie, it's worth watching. It really is, <laughs> but might want to read the book first. <laughs> Just, yeah, it's, yeah, read the book first. <laughs>